Hello all, this is a video about using the Multiplication by Heart website with some tips for you, for teachers. So Multiplication by Heart is an activity on mathagon.org. It uses flashcards and spaced repetition to help students develop fluency with multiplication. So this presentation will show you some of the features that will help you make the most of this resource. And before I go on, I just want to thank uh, Philip Legner, who is the founder of Mathagon, for founding and creating this amazing website and for helping me with this presentation. I also want to thank SFUSD teachers Sarah Hammond, Yuka Walton, and Denise Kleckner for their help. So the first thing we're going to do is show you how to create a teacher account and import your class list. And we're going to do this with a video from our colleague Yuka. So here we go. Hi, everyone. I want to show you how you can switch from a student account on Mathagon to a teacher account on Mathagon. So first, we need to log in. And we click on the button in the upper right hand corner that says login at the website mathagon.org. And it gives options to log in. I'm going to click login with Google. And it automatically connected to my um, SFUSD Google account. And so if you're not already in account settings, you want to click here in the upper right hand corner and click account settings. Okay, it, it, it doesn't automatically take you to this page. On this page, you scroll down. And there's a section that says change account type. So you want to change to a teacher account. So when I click this button, a kind of scary message that says, please note, you cannot revert this action. So just know once you switch to a teacher account, you will not be able to switch back to a student account. You can click continue here. And now my account is a teacher account. And I know this because it says teacher dashboard. And there's this green message saying that I have a teacher account. And as I create a, or in this default class, I see that no students have joined this class yet. And to add students, I can just import them from my Google Classroom. So if I click here, it's going to ask me to connect it to my SFUSD Google account one more time. I will allow these settings. And then I pick the class that I'm on. That I would like to import. And voila, my entire class is imported here. How exciting and wonderful. If for some reason you don't want to import from Google Classroom, you could have students add this your individualized class code on their student dashboard page, but that is a lot funkier. So I recommend importing all of your students from your Google Classroom. When you Okay, so next we're going to talk about the multiplication dashboard itself and um, a little bit about how the multiplication by heart uh, works. So again, Yuka is going to show us how um, to get to the multiplication dashboard. When you are on Mathagon on your teacher dashboard, you'll notice that all your students' names are on this side. And along this top row, it says divisibility and primes, factors, and multiples. But you will want to explore this multiplication dashboard, which will show you how your students have progressed on the uh, multiplication by heart virtual flashcards. And so um, you want to make sure that you're in the multiplication dashboard to be able to see their progress on the multiplication by heart flashcards. For your students to access Mathagon, I recommend that you post it on your Clever page. You could create a category here that says Mathagon. Click the green Add button, and we're adding a link. The link you want to paste here is from the website mathagon.org slash multiply. That's the direct link to the Multiplication by Heart flashcards. So I'm going to take this link, copy it, Paste it here. You could call this multiplication by heart. Put it in the map that I have And I can pick whatever icon I'd like. I'm going to pick this bright light bulb. 
and voila, now if my students go to Clever and click on this link, it'll take them directly to this multiplication by heart flashcard deck. A critical thing is that they need to log in. Notice I'm not currently logged in. So I can do the flashcards, but it will not save any of my progress. So make sure that kids log in before they start the flashcards. To log in, they click over here. And if they're already logged in with Google, then all they have to do is click this Google button and it will magically log them into their account and have their progress saved from before. All right, so in the next few slides, I'm just gonna tell you a little more about how multiplication by heart works, how it's organized. So every card in multiplication by heart connects, contains one of these visualizations. Deck one is dot representations like this, and you'll recognize those as from unit 3.3 as being uh, you know, equal groups. And then deck two contains rectangular visualizations, which is more the array model of multiplication, so rows and columns. And finally, deck three is the factor visualization like this with just the numbers two and five. So students need to unlock cards from later decks by mastering the cards and questions from earlier decks. So students have six boxes of cards. Every card starts in box A and all the other boxes are initially empty. Answering a card correctly moves it to the next box. So you see those green arrows? That moves the card to the next box. So answering it incorrectly moves it to box A. So in other words, that is going to cause them to have to repeat it. When a card reaches box F, the students should have committed it to long-term memory. That's why box F is labeled memory. This process, by the way, is called spaced repetition. You can read more about it on the interwebs. Um, students should practice around five minutes per day, and every day, Mathagon selects between 20 and 40 cards for them. The cards in box A are usually shown every day but the cards in later boxes are shown less frequently. For example, cards in box B are shown every other day, cards in box C are shown around every four days, and so on. Mathagon always starts with the simplest questions and visualizations from deck one, for example, two times three, again, with those dots and circles, or yeah, circles and stars kind of representation. And then once students are familiar with those cards and box A becomes empty, they automatically insert more cards with more complex problems and visualizations from decks two and three, for example, seven times eight. So that process of deciding which cards to show, when, how often is all automated. And if, this, if students click the gear icon, they can skip to a later deck. For example, if they want to start with more difficult questions, they can also skip one day ahead if they've completed all the questions allocated to that day and they want to continue practicing. Students can see the number of cards in each of their boxes at the bottom of their screen, so they have the same visual that you do. It's the same data shown on the teacher dashboard. So, for example, a 10 in box E means that there are 10 cards that students have answered correctly four times in a row. The total attempts column in the teacher dashboard shows the total number of questions answered by students correctly or incorrectly. So, uh, the teacher dashboard, this is a last slide, and it's a little more of a look into that. You can see here a, a, an example class, and you can see the number of cards per box for all students in your class, as well as the total number of questions that the student answered. All right, so Hermione Granger has had 543 attempts, right? She still has two uh facts in box a six in box b and so on and so forth um, this multiplication table view shows students mastery aggregated across the entire class so this class 53 percent of the students uh, have five by five have enough of sufficient fluency with five by five that it is in their quote unquote memory um, and then there's a note here that some cells might be read because it's a small percentage of students and it doesn't really tell you that much about what your students do or don't know. I hope this presentation has been helpful. It'll take a while to kind of get the hang of how this website works, but we think it might be really helpful in helping your students attain fluency with multiplication. Thanks for watching and watch us again if you need to uh, follow some of the directions.